we're going to construct a peak model for a given sample and we're going to do this using two spectra that have been measured at different angles where the sample has been tilted so that the surface sensitivity of XPS is exploited to change the apparent relationship between peaks. The first thing I'm going to do is calibrate the energy scale with respect to one another. The absolute energy scale is not going to be calibrated it's just a question of using the calibration option and aligning making sure that these peaks here which should be from a ruthenium five halves peak align in position and although they're very close I think I will just do a very fine adjustment using an option on the calibration property page where if I hold the control key down I can slide an an image of one spectrum relative to the other so what I would like to do is just make a fine adjustment and say apply so now I have my data aligned and the idea of aligning the data is so that the calculator property page can be used uh, to create a sequence of different spectra the different spectra are used to understand the, the relationship of these peaks and how they change as a as a as the proportion from one spectrum to the other occurs so hit this one is just over halfway through the sequence and you can see that as I step up and down that I've now got something which looks like a doublet that comes from the ruthenium 3d so let's just save that one So I've now found another position in this list of different spectra where the shape is very characteristic of the carbon only and I've removed from the data the any sign of a peak that would be corresponding to ruthenium 3D 5 halves. So this is expected to be representative of C1S peaks only. So I'll copy that one. So now I've got two spectra and the idea is that these two spectra now calculated from the original two spectra uh, can be used to better understand the peak model these two spectra that have just been calculated can be used to reproduce the original spectra the, the original spectra of the first and the last in this list so having overlaid these in the active tile and selected the two that we want to target generate spectra and uh, if I overlay these for Vamos box as created these are the original one the reproduced spectrum which is the sum in a least square sense of these two components and you can see here that they reproduce exactly and that's as you would expect and similarly uh, the second one has done the same so there are actually four spectra there and the reproduction is the red one and it is uh, an exact reproduction of the original data by summing these two components so if we can create a peak model for these two components we know that the peak model will then apply to the original spectrum so what we'll do is create a peak model first of all we'll do the carbon 1s and if I enter some peaks here just to give them a sensible starting point say fit we've now got a peak model that is based on on three components and they are all going to be carbon S components now in this case we've got again we'll put a background on and we've got uh, multiple peaks here however these are doublet peaks so that makes life a little bit easier in the sense that we know this is a ruthenium 3D and I'll copy that and paste and then I will create another one because this is a carbon 1S I believe and then we still have signal that doesn't belong to either of these as it would seem so let's see what this looks like if we start to introduce a constraint and the constraint I'm going to enter is 
a relationship between the doublet pair, the five halves and the three halves of the ruthenium 3D, and you can see that there is an excess signal even here. So what I'll do is I'll copy these ruthenium peaks and I'll paste them and then what I'll do is I'll move and I've still got the relationship between the ruthenium so I'm assuming that these are related to ruthenium and when I say fit I then get a peak model and let's see now let's just adjust this a little bit more and say fit again and now I've got a peak model where I think this is a carbon 1s and I think it's a carbon 1s because when I overlay these two uh, that I've got a common peak here that this peak from the C1s envelope appears to be about the same position as this one so I'm going to now construct a peak model for the original data and it's going to be based on what I've just seen from those components. And so what I'm going to do is I will take the carbon 1s, copy all, and I will paste, and then I will take the ruthenium peaks and I'll say copy all and I will say paste and so I've got a peak model which has doubled up on this carbon 1s so I'm going to delete that one and on the basis that I fitted those component peaks I'm going to lock all of these together in terms of position and it will say fit and now I have a peak model that fits the data and I've constructed this based on dividing the data into two components that are, are representative of different and more simplified envelopes that have been derived from the original data I suppose the last thing I ought to do is then take that model and propagate it I won't fit it straight away I'll propagate and I'll copy all and say paste replace and then say fit and again I've got a peak model that works for both the original data at the different angles